I got the idea for the book when I was a junior in college. I went to a lecture of a white missionary, a nice guy who was doing good things for poor people in Japan. And the people that he served were the Korean Japanese. He told a story about a little Korean boy who was born in Japan, who was bullied by his classmates, and he killed himself. He went up on a building and he jumped off. And later on, his parents went through his things and found his middle school yearbook, because the boy was only 13. And in the middle school yearbook, his Japanese classmates had written, go back to where you belong, I hate you, you smell like kimchi, and they wrote the words, die, die, die. I didn't know that I was going to write a book about the Korean Japanese people, but I did start to really think about this issue because I was entirely ignorant about the history of the colonial era of Korea and Japan. I think the concept was so much more broad than I realized. So I knew there was something wrong. I knew about the colonial era. I didn't understand what that would mean for the people of both the people on the peninsula as well as the people who went to Japan. So I did a lot of research, which meant that I learned a lot about the sociology, the history, and the law, and the economics of about a hundred years. And then I think the book became too unwieldy for me, and it was just really intimidating. Well, I wrote an entire draft, and I called it Motherland, and it was about a father and a son, Moses and Solomon, and their girlfriend, Etsko. I worked on it for a really long time, and it was really boring. Like, so by the time I finished it, it was this kind of self-righteous, angry book. One selection of it survives, and it's a section about fingerprinting, a kind of law that I found really interesting. And then it was published in the Missouri Review, a little literary quarterly that's very wonderful. And this was published in 2002. So when I say that I've been working on this book forever, I really was <laughs> working on it forever. I've been using a word processor since I was in college, although I did go to college with a typewriter because that's how old I am. But I work on a word processor, I print it out, and then I do a lot of hand editing, and then I go right back to the computer and I start to rewrite, usually very often from scratch, very often from scratch, unless it's in my 15th, 20th draft. But my first draft, my second draft are utterly unrelated. I ended up reading a great deal of academic research because the academics were the only people who had spent that kind of considerable attention on the subject of the Koreans in Japan. That said, I don't think I really understood my own novel until I lived in Japan and I met the Korean Japanese people and they were not in any way victims. In fact, they were so hardy and strong and smart and funny. And they really didn't like the interpretation that they were victims. And many of them loved Japan. Many of them had profound, wonderful relationships with the Japanese. So, and they weren't saying, oh, I hate Japan. I want to live in Korea. In fact, many of them who had gone to Korea had had terrible experiences. So all of that really changed my understanding of what I wanted to say what I needed to say. I think what I share with other writers who take writing very seriously is that all of us draft and revise and throw out multiple manuscripts. I don't know any serious writers who don't throw out manuscripts. So in that sense, I'm similar. I think where I am different is that I do a lot of field work, so I will pound the pavement and talk to people and listen to them. I will go to a lot of places. So when I think about research, I probably do a lot more than I need to do it. So I do academic research, I do secondary research, I do first person interviews, 
I go to the actual sites and and then I write drafts and then I throw them away and I start again. So in that sense, I probably take far too long and I'm not sure if that's necessarily a good thing. 